I call on Professor Sue Baker, Pro Vice-Chancellor, Community and Cultural Partnerships, to introduce Associate Professor Matthew Hopcraft, who has kindly agreed to deliver the occasional address. This afternoon, the University welcomes Associate Professor Matthew Hopcraft as guest speaker. With more than 25 years in the dental industry, Matthew is a recognised leader and an expert in dental public health and advocacy. As a dentist, he has worked in the Army, private and public dental practices, and as an academic at the University of Melbourne. He co-founded Sugar Free Smiles to advocate for measures to improve oral health in the community. He is an experienced speaker and media voice and a strong advocate for healthy eating. Matthew has enjoyed a wide variety of experiences in his dental career, working in remote Aboriginal communities on the Cape York Peninsula and in Tonga, presenting dental research at conferences in Europe and North America, and being involved in the education of approximately 1,000 dentists at the Melbourne Dental School, including a role as the Director of Clinical Education during his time in the Australian Army. Matthew is currently the CEO of the Australian Dental Association at Victorian Branch. Please join me in welcoming Associate Professor Matthew Hopcraft. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chancellor, academic colleagues, distinguished guests, family, friends, and most importantly, the graduates who are here today. It is an absolute honour and a privilege to be able to stand up before you today and give the occasional address for the 2019 graduating classes in dentistry, in oral health therapy, uh, PhD, and other higher degree students. It might surprise you to know that 25 years ago this week, I was sitting up in Wilson Hall, nervous, and excited and about to receive my Bachelor of Dental Science degree. I know, I don't look that old. Uh, I suspect it's the moisturiser. <laughs> it's fair to say that I don't think too many people back then, not the Dean, not any of the people who taught me, and certainly not any of my classmates, would have picked me as the person who was most likely to give a graduating occasional address uh, in, at any time in the future. But I think that that's one of the really wonderful things about our profession. It gives so many opportunities to people uh, to do amazing things. A lot's changed in our profession over the last 25 years. And I look at the challenges that you face now stepping out into the profession and how difficult that's going to be compared to when I was a graduate that short 25 years ago. Things like implants were only just coming into existence. It was an emerging technology. The digital dentistry that you're exposed to today just didn't exist. We had to take impressions uh, the old-fashioned, very messy way. Uh, there was a lot of new technology that was starting to emerge. I still have very fond memories of Professor Tyus introducing us to a wonderful new dental material, glass item of cement. Um, all of this has now changed very, very dramatically. No one wore loops. Like everything, though, there are constants. The more things change, the more things do stay the same. And fundamentally, our job in the oral health professions is the same as it's always been, and that's to improve the oral health of the, of the whole community. And we still have a lot of work to do in that regard. As a young kid growing up in a small town in country Victoria, I decided that I wanted to be a dentist. I'm not quite sure why, but it seemed like it was a great idea and a great way to help improve people's health. I did work experience with my local dentist who really got me hooked on the idea of doing dentistry and I was fortunate enough to get into Melbourne University and to be able to study dentistry. My plan at the time was to go back to the country once I'd graduated uh, and work in a small country practice. You can say that I'm obviously not very good at planning because that really never eventuated. I think life often presents you with a lot of opportunities and sometimes the easiest decision is to not take an opportunity, to take the conservative path, to say no and go low risk. Um, and by nature, most people are very risk averse, but I think that when you look at taking some opportunities, the risk can pay off into some great re rewards. And so I'm a very big believer in taking the opportunities that life throws you and see where that opportunity might lead you. Well, as a student, I joined the army, mostly because I needed a job 
um, and it was a great opportunity for me to get myself through the university. Um, the Army had a fantastic scholarship deal. It put me through the rest of uni, and really all I had to do was work for two and a half years. The risk was great, I mean, going to work and serve in the Australian Army, uh, but the reward was fantastic, and I had seven of the best years in my life working around Australia with some of the most amazing people in, in our Defence Forces. Serving our country uh, was, a, was a huge honour. While I was in the Army, I did get an interesting opportunity to undertake some research, and almost by default I fell into doing a research master's degree, which opened up another opportunity for me, and I came back to teach here at University of Melbourne uh, as a consequence of taking that opportunity. And I had 13 of the best years of my life working at the best dental school at the best university uh, in Australia. I think I'm contractually obliged to say that, am, am I right? Um, I don't think anyone who's gone through the dental school would have heard that phrase before. <laughs> Um, I had a fantastic time in the army, but I came out uh, and spent this time at the university. I made the mistake one day of turning up to the annual general meeting of the Victorian branch of the Australian Dental Association. What I didn't realise at the time is that no one turns up to annual general meetings. Um, and so they thought that I was really interested in getting involved with the Dental Association. And the next thing I knew, I was on their governing council. It was actually a really great decision and probably a career-defining move for me. I was fortunate enough to serve on the board for a number of years, serve a term as the president, and also serve on the national board. And now I serve as the, as the CEO of the Victorian branch. In some respects, I guess that makes me a leader in our profession, and certainly not somewhere that I thought I would be. But when you reflect on it, we're actually all leaders, or we should certainly all be thinking of ourselves as leaders in the profession. Some of you will go out and lead a dental team in private practice or you'll run public clinics. Some of you will get involved in your professional associations, we certainly hope you will, or come back and work in teaching or in academia, mentoring uh, the next generation in the profession. But also, you'll be leaders in the community, and this is a role that I think you should absolutely embrace. Dental professionals are very well respected out in the community, and we always rate really highly in surveys of trust and ethics. Sure, we're not nurses, but we're certainly not politicians either. We should never take that trust for granted. And we should use the position that we have in the community, that trust and respect, not just to improve the oral health of the patients within our own care, within our own practices, but see how we can use that to improve the, the overall health and the well-being of the entire community because that's what leaders do. People often ask me why I'm in public health. It's certainly not the sexiest of the, uh, the, the parts of health that we all know are out there. I actually think we should all be in public health. Public health improves health, millions of people at a time, and that's what we should really be most interested in doing. That's what gets me excited every day when I go to work, and that's what keeps me up late at night. When I look out at the sea of faces, uh, I'm filled with a lot of hope for the future of our profession. I've been fortunate enough to, to have a, a small, small role in teaching some people in the room today, uh, and I know how excited you all must feel. You've all worked extremely hard to get to this moment. Hard to get into the best dental school in the best university in Australia. Even harder to get through these courses, which are extremely difficult. Take the opportunity to savour that today. Take it all in. Celebrate with your friends and the family, the people who helped to support you and get you through to this moment today. Then take a deep breath, because the really hard work starts tomorrow. When you go out into the world to start work as a dentist, as an oral health therapist, as a dental specialist, or in whatever field that you're graduating from today, that's when you're all going to change the world. Congratulations and good luck.